Hey guys, today we are going to talk about why there's so much cheating in Magic and how cheating has affected the history of Magic the Gathering professional play. Cheating has always ex existed in this game. I'm not sure if it's due to people who are, some people who are attracted to this game are more likely to cheat, or just that this is a very easy vehicle to cheat. So today we're looking at Frederico Lemis, and he's doing a cheat that I've seen many times in person. Very hard to call someone out unless you have the video. If it's not witnessed or there's not a judge or another person witnessing it, this cheat is impossible to call someone out on. And just to add a little bit more, FNM and pre-release, I've seen this cheat happen with Evolving Wilds and the friends. These people don't travel by themselves. They travel in packs of eight. And if they if you call out their friend and cheating, they will get very angry with you. They will get very aggressive with you. This is why I no longer play competitive magic. It's because I'm not having a good time. And there's so many other things I would rather do in my time, including play casual magic, than be involved in cheating. And to a lesser extent, people are trading a lot of counterfeits where I live, and I don't trade cards at all anymore. It's not worth my time to deal with it. Cheating has been part of Magic forever. I remember when I was really getting into competitive Magic, the number one deck was Prosperous Bloom, and it was a combo deck. Well, there was a Magic Pro, and he would pull off the combo almost every time, so I was like, wow, this is the most powerful deck in Magic history. Let me make the deck, and then I can beat all my friends. But the combo never happened. Like, it just took forever, right? I was like, what's going on? Like, I'm playing the same exact deck. Well, it turns out this Magic Pro, Pro had cards in his lap, cards in his sleeve, just cards everywhere, extra copies of it. And he won time and time again. Now, the Magic mechanics are very similar. The You would figure, hmm, that was a long time ago. That couldn't possibly happen today with cameras. Well... Amulet Bloom, a recent modern deck, was the same exact cards and lap cheat. You put extra cards in your lap, put your extra cards in your sideboard, and then when you pick it up, you already have your you know hand. This is both fascinating and very scary that through Magic's history, the cheating never really got better. This type of cheating that we're seeing from Frederico, the misty rainforest into a tutor and when he gets caught take a very quick look at this his opponent knows what he's doing and he catches him he's pretending that he's really interested in the library he's going to pretend that he's really interested in how many cards his opponent has and look at this touch give me a card count i'm trying to distract you oh, i got my card the cards at the front Look what card he puts back. He puts the first one in the back. He does not put the same card he just drew by cheating. He tutors. And that is crazy. That is crazy. Imagine how many times this guy has to do this to develop it so smoothly, to develop it even past the first cheat. There's a second cheat and he gets the card he wants. This is the history of Magic the Gathering as I have known it. Pro players, they cheat. Jared, you know, there's pictures of all these pro champions with trophies and Alex Bertini's or checks, Power 9. They're still out there. They already got the money. They already got the Power 9. They were able to keep everything. They were cheating you. That's who was losing. If you ask who was losing money, oh, they didn't hurt anyone by cheating. It was you. Maybe they didn't cheat you directly, but they cheated everyone in that room. And that's what people don't get. People idolize pros. People think Alex Bertini is amazing because he's so good at cheating. People want heroes. 
but these heroes are Magic the Gathering players. They're not firefighters. They're not teachers. They're not Elon Musk. I'm a big fan of Elon. They're not Steve Jobs. These people are just Magic players. And that's where it is. That's when you get Frank. Remember Frank? I can't mention his last name. Otherwise, he's going to take down this video. But Frank is this creepy dude who's the... Um, dating Melissa, who was the Omi Magic Top 8 Pro Tour female. And they were, quote, a power couple. And then he was cheating on her, just messages after messages after messages, because he was an MTG celebrity. My gosh. If I had to choose what I would be a celebrity doing, the last thing I would choose is being a Magic the Gathering celebrity. The very last. I would rather be a cook. I, I'm not a big fan of cooking, but I'd rather be one of those cooking people. Like, and I, I would hate that, but it would be better to be a magic celebrity. I'd rather be, um, uh, there was a recent documentary on how the guy doing uh, Donkey Kong or King Kong or something, he was cheating. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I would rather be, you know, the, the record ho holder for just a random obscure video game. And that was my claim to fame. It is embarrassing. And I feel embarrassed uh, because how much does a average pro magic player actually make? Probably not very much. There you go. That's why they cheat. If their entire income or a large majority of their income is based on winning and that's it, there's no sponsorship money, there's no outside funding. Look at NASCAR. Look at all those little stickers on that car. The car is full of stickers. Look at pros. They're not getting paid that much by these quote sponsors. And the reason the reason I feel like League of Legends, you can have pro teams, you can have gaming homes, you can have psychologists, you can have all this stuff is because people there's more audience. Magic will never get big enough, especially in the physical card game, like a Hearthstone would. Brian Kibler at the time, the most famous Magic player chose Hearthstone to be a, at the time, semi-average to large Hearthstone player. And that was the correct decision. Magic, the, it's an oxymoron to be called a Magic Pro. To become a professional anything. Name me a pro chess player or a pro basketball player who does not make quite a bit of money, a hundred six figures, right? That's not even asking very much for a, even the scrubs in the NBA, I, I think make, what's the salary minimal, minimal salary. I think in the NFL, it's like 300, 400,000 a year. It is fascinating to me that the system is set up so you have to cheat. Because all your winnings, all your money... I mean, look at this guy's t-shirt. Do you think he's sponsored? Look at his sleeves. Does he look like he's sponsored? Look at his hair. Does he look like he's sponsored by Rogaine? Like, seriously. Is he sp sponsored by Taco Bell? Mm, Taco Bell wouldn't want this guy as his spot. Like, my, my point being is very simple. Oh, so like, I can, I can like, how, the sweat. Oh, it's just so gross. I'm just grossed out watching this video. Imagine if it was in person. Is he sponsored by that um, that keychain that he's wearing? Is, what is that? Is that like a medicine pill that he needs to take? Okay, regardless, I'm going off topic now. The reason Magic Pros cheat is because they have to to make money. It's very simple. It's money. Imagine if I put you in a scenario and I force you to be a Magic Pro player, but I'm not going to give you any sponsor money you're not going to write content, or if you write content for me, I'm going to pay you ten to fifteen dollars an article. That's less than I pay my content writers. For God's sake, like it's terrible. But that's how much Pico Trade was paying. It was paying fifteen dollars in Pico points, which, when you divide by four, is currently like six bucks. No, less. Four bucks? Yeah, four bucks is what you get per article. So. The only way for you to, even if you have to cheat on camera, you have to do it to feed yourself. 
You have to feed your tummy and you have to feed your pride. Magic the Gathering is not about who's the best player. I've always believed this. Even when I was very young, I grew up with Mike Long and Mark Justice. Every time they were in that Inquest magazine that I would get once a month. And I would read about how awesome they would be. And then I would make the same deck and they wouldn't operate the same. It's because I'm not Misty Rainforesting or Fetching for <laughs> Tutor Fetching, right? I'd, imagine the card. And we call it Misty Vampiric Tutor. It's a land. It comes in play untapped. You can tap it anytime you want. You can search for a land. And then when you're searching for land, you search for another card and you put it on top of your deck. Vampiric Tutor, considered one of the most powerful cards in Magic history, is one black. And you have to sacrifice two life. So you're giving up tempo, and it doesn't give you a land. And you're giving up card advantage. In this case, the Misty Rainforest, you are not giving up anything. You're not giving up card advantage. You're not giving up tempo. You're not even spending... It's free. Like, everything's free. And you get to tutor for the card that you want. So every Misty Rainforest, every fetch land you own now, is now a, a Vampiric Tutor in addition to being a land. So can you beat someone? Like, imagine playing a game against someone like this. And for you, a Misty Rainforest is just a Misty Rainforest. But for the pro Magic players, a Misty Rainforest has Vampiric Tutor attached to it that costs no mana. Who would win? Hmm, that's an interesting story. What if I were to play a combo deck? You don't think that would help me? That all my Misty Rainforests, all my fetch lands are tutors that I don't need to pay? Hmm. Fascinating. So my point is very simple. Magic pros are not people to look up towards. Like, it's just so many of them get caught for cheating. Jared, uh, Jared Bocelli, or who, whatever his name was, Alex Bocini. And they're still very popular figures today, and they will return. Alex has returned twice already. Like, banning him once, no, didn't stop him. Banning him twice, didn't stop him. He's going to continue to win. I guarantee this to you. He's going to win one large Star City Games event, because that's the only place that will allow him to win. And probably the next 2018, we'll be making another video about how awesome he won a championship, and he was piling a deck called Miracles, and he just hit every Miracle. And just the way Magic is set up with the Miracle function, with the Misty Rainforests, it allows people to cheat very easily. Now on camera, it's a little more difficult and people would have to be quite stupid to cheat. But on FNMs, at GPs or GP, uh, PTQs, this stuff happens all the bloody time. Anyway, that's it. Bye guys.